A detailed inventory of materials seized by the FBI at Mar-a-Lago is now public. This comes as a former White House counsel testifies before a grand jury in Washington. I spoke exclusively with former National Security Advisor John Bolton, and he said both are significant and serious developments. Based on the court filings and this newly unsealed inventory, what jumps out at you? Well, I think uh, the confusion that still exists in people's minds because of what Trump himself is saying and the confused arguments his lawyers have made uh, have contributed to, uh, to a lot of uncertainty in the public mind. And I think it's important that everybody take a deep breath here. This is a very serious matter. Uh, and it would be better if we could let the legal process play out. I know that may be frustrating to some people, but uh, the seriousness of it itself dictates that we try and proceed in the most orderly way we can. And when you say seriousness of the matters, just take that a step further. The real issue and what is now being looked at by the director of national intelligence is assessing how sensitive that information actually was and the risk that it may have come into the hands of uh, American adversaries and perhaps compromised uh, sources and methods of gathering intelligence. Do you think that's possible in these circumstances? Well, certainly the uh, security of the documents was not up to the standards that's normally expected. Whether, in fact, there was access to them, whether Trump showed them to other people, these are all things I think that could be part of the ongoing justice investigation. Mm -hmm. There's a, a new statement from President Trump's spokesperson, and he calls this inventory evidence of the unprecedented and unnecessary raid. Those are his words of the president's home and added that it was not surgical. They likened it to a smash and grab. Well, th this is more political rhetoric, and the more they do this, the more their legal position uh, is jeopardized. Several examples in the inventory of magazines, newspapers mixed in with records that are marked classified. What do you make of the commingling of these records? Well, I think uh, there's no doubt Trump liked to get newspaper clippings about himself and other interesting things. They tended to go on the famous pile on the side of the Resolute desk. I was never exactly sure what he did with him. But it doesn't surprise me that you might have a layer of newspaper clippings followed by a layer of government documents followed by a layer of classified documents. That was the kind of chaotic uh, administration that I think we all became pretty used to. Let's take that a step further. What are the national security implications of the commingling of these records? Well, to the extent that the newspaper clippings were treated like most people in this country would treat newspaper clippings, it shows a real disdain for the seriousness of the classification at issue. Uh, in, in most offices, you would have a very clear segregation of the sensitive classified material locked in safes, uh, handled very carefully, versus all the unclassified material. This, to me, is more evidence that Donald Trump uh, didn't give much attention to the sensitivity of the classified information. And I want, I want you to help us decode that FBI evidence photo. We can see folders marked secret and top secret lying on then President Trump's office floor. What do you make of it? Well, first, I think it was a good thing for the Justice Department to put that photo out there. Uh, I think uh, it reflects that they're willing to, to do something they don't normally do in a criminal investigation, is try and explain some of the background of what's happening. I took that photo to be nothing more than what experienced FBI or other investigative personnel would do when they're engaged in the execution of a search warrant. They get certain material. Uh, they take a picture of it, they index it, and it helps the FBI agents or others who seize the material to say, this is what I listed in the receipt we gave the person against whom the search warrant was served. Uh, here's a picture that embodies part of it. And when that agent testifies that he sees that material as part of the search, it it's establishes the chain of custody. Now, the, uh, which is important in, in proof in court, that it's real material. It's not planted evidence. Just uh, switching topics. Based on our reporting here at CBS News, the former White House counsel, Pat Cipollone, has gone to the grand jury here in Washington, D.C. Does that tell you that the Justice Department investigation is squarely focused on the former president and his closest associates? Well, it's, uh, it must have reached a stage where they're talking to the counsel of the president that uh, what the president himself did is very much 
uh, under examination because the sole purpose of the office of the counsel of the president is to advise the president. Now, there may be limitations on what uh, Cipollone will say, but, uh, you know, this is the Justice Department examining another government lawyer. And there's some confusion about the attorney-client privilege in this circumstance. I think it's important people understand every government attorney has as his or her client the United States of America. It's not an individual, even if it's the president. So attorney-client privilege here really is not going to be an issue. There may be executive privilege, but I think this is a very significant step uh, that justice has taken. Significant in what sense? Well, when you get to the point of talking to the attorney where uh, uh, Pat Cipollone would have to be worried about the, what's called the, the fraud exception to the attorney-client privilege, uh, you, you can't commit fraud with your attorney and say, oh, it's all mm -hmm. privileged. So I think Pat's own self-interest here is to tell the complete truth about what he said to the president.